Ձեզ այսօր հյուրն կալել ենք Հայաստանում Հնդկաստանի արտակարգ եւ լիազոր դեսպան Նիլակ Շիսահասին հային։ Դեսպանի հետ կզրուցեն երկկողմ հարաբերություններում վերջին տարիներին գրանցած հաջողությունների համագործակցության առաջնահերթ ուղղությունների առաջիկացրագրերի եւ երկկողմ հետաքրքրություններ կայացնող այլ հարցերի մասին։ Ms. Ambassador, thanks for accepting the interview request. Uh, you have been to Armenia for almost a year. Uh, what have you discovered about Armenia and Armenians? Well, thank you first of all uh, for inviting me for this interview and a very good morning to you. Uh, it's actually been um, about nine months, uh, a little less than nine months that I've been here. And it's been a very wonderful experience so far. I find a lot of uh, similarities between uh, Indians and Armenians. There's a lot of uh, affinity between our cultures. There's a lot of emphasis on family values. Uh, Armenians are very welcoming, very hospitable. So very similar in those respects to, to Indians. And so I think uh, it's been a lovely journey of discovery so far. And your cuisine is uh, so nice and your love for uh, lavash. So these are the things that I have discovered so far and uh, the journey continues. With what priorities did you come to Armenia and how would you assess the activities of the past year? Well, you know, the relations between India and Armenia have always been very close and very warm and friendly. But we do see that from the visit of our external affairs minister, Dr. S. Jai Shankar, in October 2021. Uh, there has been, uh, you know, an upward trajectory in our bilateral relations. And in every sphere, we find that, uh, you know, there has been a diversification, a deepening of our relations, whether it be, you know, increased uh, political engagements, economic trade, people to people contacts. So in every sphere, we note that, you know, there has been a uh, a uh, deepening of uh, relations and uh, it's my uh, duty and my priority to ensure that we keep on this path of this upward trajectory in our bilateral relations. And diplomatic relations between Armenia and India were established in 1992. Uh, looking back on the 31 years of cooperation between our countries, what important achievements will you single out? Uh, what picture do we have now in Armenian-Indian relations? Well, uh, last year in 2022, we uh, celebrated the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Armenia. And I would say in these uh, 30 years, I think we have had uh, many milestones. Uh, but as I just mentioned that with the visit of our external affairs minister two years ago, uh, we find that, uh, you know, a lot of things are happening, uh, increased, uh, you know, political engagements, then there's defense cooperation, there is uh, more number of Indians traveling uh, to Armenia. If you take this year itself, I mean, you see that in uh, January, uh, the foreign minister, Mr. Mirzoyan, he participated in the virtual voice of the Global South Summit. In March, he attended the Raisina Dialogue in Delhi. Raisina Dialogue now is a very important uh, event in the diplomatic calendar of the world. Then uh, in April, we had the first uh, consultations between India, Iran and Armenia, the trilateral consultations. Uh, we also had um, uh, the visits by your Minister of Health, uh, Ms. Anaheta Venesian. Uh, to uh, India for the Advantage uh, Health uh, Summit. We also had uh, your Deputy Minister of Environment who uh, was there present when the International Big Cat Alliance was launched. Uh, in, uh, in June, we find the first uh, you know, round of our policy planning dialogue. Then we've had a visit by the National Defense College, a very important uh, high-level visit in August. And in September, our two foreign ministers, that is our external affairs minister and your foreign minister, Mr. Mirzoyan, met on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. And in October, we had uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration and Infrastructure and the Deputy Foreign Minister who visited Mumbai for the Global uh, India Maritime Summit. So as you can see, every month we've had uh, engagements and uh, these are continuing. So I can sum it up as, you know, uh, 
Armenia has supported us in all our candidatures in uh, international uh, fora, in the multilateral bodies, and Armenia is a very uh, reliable partner for us in the South Caucasus. And especially recently, many experts and officials point out to the need and great uh, potential of expanding cooperation between Armenia and India uh, in various fields. According to you, which areas are the most promising for the cooperation between our countries? Uh, well, I think, uh, uh, you know, I think all areas uh, have potential and promise. Uh, our political engagements are very close. Uh, we also have uh, defense cooperation. Uh, I think we need to uh, further focus on uh, our economic and commercial ties. Uh, those are below potential and uh, that's what we are attempting to do, work with uh, all the stakeholders, the chambers of commerce, the businessmen, so that we can uh, increase our bilateral trade. Our bilateral trade today stands at uh, less than 200 million per year and they're really the focus is how to increase uh, you know, the trade as far as people-to-people -people contacts are concerned, uh, we have a large number of Indian students here who are studying medicine. Uh, we also have uh, many, uh, you know, Indian professionals. We also have Indian workers who have uh, come. And I think uh, this people-to-people uh, -people contacts, this is very important because this uh, increases understanding even further between uh, the two countries. They're like a living bridge between our uh, two countries, culture, civilizations. And uh, Ms. Ambassador, India is the fifth largest economy in the world. What do um, Armenia and India have to offer each other? Uh, how do you generally assess the dynamics of economic cooperation and what steps are being taken or planned uh, to reach uh, to the fullest potential of bilateral economic cooperation? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, today indeed uh, India is the fifth largest uh, economy and uh, if we have an average growth rate of around 7%, India will be the third largest economy by 2030. So uh, definitely I think, uh, you know, uh, by cooperating uh, increasingly between our two countries, it can be a, a force multiplier, you know, Armenia can benefit, but it really is a two-way street. And as I just mentioned, our attempt is to ensure that our business ties go up. And for that, uh, we have been organizing business forums. Uh, two uh, business forums were organized this year in the month of uh, May and in April and in May. In fact, shortly after uh, I arrived in Armenia and we are making sure that, uh, you know, the, the contacts between our uh, business persons, uh, we are facilitating those contacts, increasing that. And uh, we are also looking at how we can have direct connectivity to have a direct flight. Uh, between the two countries. So uh, those are the areas that we are uh, working on and concentrating on. And India's foreign political role and interest in the region, in, uh, particularly in the South Caucasus, is also growing on most regional and, uh, let's say, global issues, the interests and positions of Armenia and India uh, seem to coincide. Can we expect that the bilateral cooperation will grow into a strategic uh, partnership uh, in the coming years? Uh, uh, indeed, uh, India has been looking uh, very closely at uh, the regional situation in the South uh, Caucasus. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Armenia is a very uh, reliable partner for us in the South Caucasus. Uh, and uh, we have been working together, our, uh, you know, we support each other in the different uh, multilateral bodies and in the international fora. So there is a very good cooperation uh, at the international level. Uh, and, you know, we are working towards, um, you know, ensuring that the ties between the two countries are closer. And as we work, uh, we would definitely now like to take it to the next level uh, between, uh, you know, on the political front between the two countries. And also uh, military cooperation is one of uh, the new but promising directions in the cooperation between our countries. We're talking about arms supply, anti-terrorist fight, joint exercises, uh, joint exercises, military education and training, implementation of some joint programs in the field of uh, military industry. Can you elaborate on this uh, about our cooperation? How is it going? Uh, so uh, we uh, have seen, uh, uh, you know, uh, a good cooperation in the defense area. 
and uh, we find uh, also this is a very uh, you know an area which is quite promising uh, we are not only looking at uh, defense technical cooperation but we are also looking at capacity building uh, so you know trainings uh, that take place in the defense uh, training establishments in india so we are uh, taking uh, these uh, aspects forward in our relations and this year, Armenia and India signed an agreement on cooperation and mutual uh, assistance in the customs sphere, which was even ratified by the National Assembly of Armenia. Uh, so it lays the groundwork for the expansion and strengthening of uh, cooperation between the customs services of Armenia and India. Will this also contribute to the growth of uh, uh, bilateral trade? Well, actually, uh, this, of course, uh, this uh, agreement on uh, cooperation and mutual assistance in the areas of customs, this was uh, signed in June this year. And as you just said, uh, this had already been ratified in India and now the uh, Armenian National Assembly ratified it earlier this week. Uh, so it will come into force. And um, not only this agreement, we also signed the International Solar Alliance Agreement. Uh, last month in uh, November and before that in June uh, there was a very important agreement on uh, global digital public infrastructure uh, which was signed. So many agreements uh, which have been signed this year. As far as the customs agreement is concerned, uh, this will definitely uh, contribute to having a streamlining of, uh, you know, trade uh, because, you know, the customs authorities will be cooperating closer. So this will streamline and smoothen uh, the relations and especially the bilateral economic relations between our two countries. And Armenia and India are also interested in the South-North, uh, North-South project. You recently announced that the issue of ensuring the Armenian side's access to Indian ports is under consideration. What opportunities can this direction create? So, uh, you know, the International uh, North-South Transport Corridor, it's a multimodal, uh, you know, uh, transport corridor. And uh, we have, in, in fact, Armenia is a member of the INSTC. So uh, we, India is very much uh, looking uh, forward to uh, Armenia's uh, greater participation and we would like to, uh, you know, help and facilitate in any way that we can for uh, greater uh, participation. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a very important infrastructure project in Armenia which is uh, linking the northern border with Georgia and the southern border with Iran, the north-south highway uh, project. So as far as infrastructure development is concerned, uh, India is uh, very much supports that. We have uh, Indian companies who have manifested interest. So uh, definitely India looks forward to, uh, you know, greater infrastructure uh, development. And the fact that in India there's a great push for uh, infrastructure development, you know, we are building uh, ports, uh, railways, airports, highways, highways, waterways. So there is so much uh, international experience that uh, our companies have accumulated. And definitely we would like to share uh, that experience with our partners in Armenia. And the possible co uh, conclusion of a free trade agreement with India can be also an additional incentive for the EAEU India trade circulation. How interesting is the Armenian market for Indian investors, uh, Ms. Ambassador? In this sense, can we expect uh, new investments in the infrastructure development in Armenia? Mm -hmm. So uh, India continues uh, its dialogue with the Eurasian, uh, uh, the EAEU, uh, and uh, also for the FTA. Uh, the trade turnover between the EAEU countries and India uh, doubled in uh, 2022. And uh, it also increased by another 90% in uh, the first quarter of this year, 2023. So uh, several studies have been conducted by the government of India as well as uh, discussions have uh, taken place between the business community and uh, this uh, studies have definitely confirmed that uh, concluding a trade agreement with EAEU would be of significant uh, interest to us as in as Armenia is a part of the EAEU I think uh, this uh, you know, if there is an FTA, that will definitely boost uh, India-Armenia uh, trade and it will attract uh, Indian investments, greater Indian investments in Armenia. 
And also contacts between our people are also very important from the perspective of improving, uh, of improving relations between our countries. In recent months, uh, the entry of Indian citizens to Armenia for study and work purposes has significantly increased. The number of Armenian tourists to India is also increasing. How do you assess these trends? Um, I think it's a very positive trend. Uh, we've uh, traditionally had a very large number of Indian students studying here, uh, especially medical students. So their number uh, is around uh, 3,000. We also note that in the past uh, few months uh, of this year itself, there has been a significant increase in the number of uh, Indian uh, workers. And we are working with all the concerned Armenian authorities to ensure that uh, this migration is within a certain legal uh, framework. Um, I think, uh, and Indian tourists, uh, they are uh, increasingly uh, choosing Armenia as a destination uh, to come and visit. So. I think uh, this only uh, increases uh, the people-to-people -people contacts and in the larger picture contributes uh, to deepening our relations. So it's a very positive uh, development. And Ms. Ambassador, the Armenian community in India is not very large. Uh, to what extent have you interacted with Armenians in your country? Oh, the, you know, as soon as my appointment as India's ambassador to Armenia was confirmed, one of the first things I did was to uh, reach out to the Armenian community in India. It's a small community, around uh, 200 families in, in Kolkata, but there is a small pockets of Armenian uh, uh, community in Chennai, in Pune, in Mumbai. Uh, I actually visited the Armenian College and Philanthropic Academy. I interacted with the faculty, with the students. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. And, you know, we have a very long history of contacts between our two countries. We have Armenian churches, cemeteries. Um, you know, the first Armenian church was established in Agra in 1562. And all the churches uh, and all the establishments, uh, they're in very good condition. And, you know, it, uh, the Armenians form uh, a part of the Indian mosaic and makes our uh, country richer. Uh, to that extent. And before arriving uh, in Armenia, what information did you have broadly about Armenia? What impressed you the most about Armenia? Well, actually, I'm not new uh, to Armenia. Back in uh, 2002 to 2004, I was the desk officer dealing with uh, bilateral relations with uh, Armenia. So in that sense, I knew, uh, you know, about the country. I um, knew about the civilization and the culture. What really has uh, impressed me over these decades and more so that I am here is, uh, you know, all the, uh, the tragedies and all the uh, dangers and threats that the Armenians have faced throughout uh, the centuries. I think it's this um, innate uh, tenacity that the Armenians have and also, um, you know, they have, uh, they have perseverance. And so that's how uh, you have uh, survived and you have flourished. So I think that is something that I really admire. And also such questions. So I just um, read that you know 15 languages. What are those languages? It's very oh, interesting that's not for true me. at all. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, misinformation and uh, disinformation uh, going on in the internet. Um, but yes, I am a linguist by uh, professional training, but I only speak four languages and they happen to be uh, Bengali, which is my mother tongue, Hindi, which is uh, India's uh, national language, English and French. These are my uh, languages. Thanks for the interview, Ms. Ambassador. Thank you so much for having invited me. I saw him here in Hayastanum and Kastani at the Karkevliazor Despan, Nilakshi, Saha, Sinhan, Hajotun.